Treating in clinic as an osteopath, this is one of the most common questions I'll get asked. What causes that popping or cracking sound when we manipulate or adjust joints? So hopefully we'll be able to answer that question in this video, but as you'll see, it's not that simple. In 1947, a couple of researchers by the names of Rosten and Wheeler Haynes, they took a finger and did some x-ray images before, during and after while applying a traction force to the metacarpophalangeal joint, so this one here. So they gradually applied traction to that joint until a crack was heard and then assessed the images. And what they found was after the crack sounded, there was the formation of a gas bubble inside that joint or a clear space. So that gas bubble formation only occurred after the crack had been heard. So what they assumed from that is the formation of that gas bubble was likely what caused the production of that cracking sound. Now skip ahead to 1971 where Unsworth and colleagues reproduced the same experiment or in a similar way. So they again took that metacarpophalangeal joint and they tractioned it and using x-ray images they examined what happened before or what the joint looked like before and then what was present after that crack sound was produced. So again, they also found that when the crack was produced, they saw the formation of this gas bubble or this clear space inside the joint. However, they concluded differently and suspected that the sound that was produced was actually from the collapse of the bubble and not the formation of the bubble. So now we have two theories. There's the formation of a gas bubble and the collapse of the gas bubble that's said to be producing this crack or pop sound. Now fast forward to 2003, where three researchers wanted to investigate this question in the spine. So it had only been done in the fingers until this point. So what they did is they did x-ray images before and after manipulation, as well as some CT images before and after manipulation. But interestingly, what they found, that even after the crack, there was no increase in joint space, but there was also no sign of any gas bubble formation. So currently, we don't have any evidence to say whether the same phenomenon is occurring in the spine because they're quite different joints, as you can see, and the manipulation itself, if you've ever had your spine manipulated, isn't typically a traction, it's usually a rotation or a side bending movement. So the mechanism is different, the joints are different, and so far we don't actually have any evidence to show whether the gas bubble formation even occurs. Now finally to our most recent study, 2015 with Korchuk and, and colleagues, they wanted to reproduce the same study again using the finger. So this time though, they assessed with MRI imaging. So they tractioned the finger until a pop or crack was heard, or until they got up to 16 kilograms of force so as not to produce any damage to the joint. So they tractioned the finger, waited for the pop to sound, and then assessed those MRI images. And once again, when the crack happened, they saw the formation of this gas bubble or this airspace. So they concluded that it was actually the formation of the bubble, once again, that caused the crack sound because it was at the same moment that gas bubble formed that the pop was heard. So herein lies our summary and our problem. We've got three studies that have looked at the finger, this metacarpophalangeal joint, and all three have seen the formation of some sort of gas bubble or clear space inside the joint when that sound occurred. Uh, some of them concluded that it was the formation itself that caused the pop. The other one concluded that it was the popping of the bubble or the collapse of that bubble that caused the pop, thereby leading to the term cavitation or that imploding of that bubble. Then we had a study on the neck that did a similar thing and manipulated, looked at scans, but couldn't find any gas bubble formation. So because the joints are quite different and we don't typically manipulate the spine in the same way, we can't say if this same occurrence happens in the spine when we manipulate. We have some evidence to say it could be gas bubble formation or collapse, but we don't have any evidence in the spine to say whether that's happening for sure. So not exactly the answer we were hoping for, it's not clear cut, but hopefully it gives you a little understanding of the possible mechanism of why we get that sound when a joint cracks. However, clearly more research needs to be done. See you guys next time.